maybe we're all a little bit guilty of it, holding on to more stuff than we actually need. But some pack rats take it to a whole new level, and it can be a real problem. Here's NBC's Janet Chamlian. Tara Wright is expecting a new baby soon, but that's not why she and her husband just moved into a new 5,000-square-foot home. There's not enough storage space <laughs> to keep everything that I've collected over the years. So much clutter, she can't bear to throw out any of it, a behavioral disorder called compulsive hoarding. Show me the room and show me what's, what's what. Okay. I probably have between three to 500 T-shirts. I save the bags and the packaging. This is mail from, two th from seven years ago that you mm -hmm. haven't opened. How would you feel about just taking all of this, Tara, and, and just putting it in the trash? If I, I would have an anxiety attack, probably. Wright is buried in her treasures. Hoarders like her don't just save stuff. They're constantly acquiring more. Compulsive hoarding affects as many as 2 million Americans. Experts say its severity varies widely, from homes that are so cluttered you can't even walk through them, to a closet that may simply have more shoes than its owner will ever wear. People have emotional attachment to events, to pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. They think that they're throwing part of themselves or part of their experience away. Dr. Ida Gorbis is an expert on compulsive disorders. She labels Wright a sentimental hoarder who attaches emotion to possessions. I have attachment issues. I, I can't pinpoint what it is when you say what's going on. I really don't know. One at a time, Dr. Gorbis and Wright go through the boxes, some of which haven't been opened for years. Trash haulers are at the ready to take away what Wright decides she can part with. How much is your anxiety now? Um, pretty high. You're okay. anxious and you're visibly anxious. You I have that? to make room for the baby, so I'm ready, yeah. you know. So there is room for the future. Yeah. With encouragement, Wright was able to let go of some of what she saved. This is all we had to take back out, so we did good. And yet she knows there's a long road ahead. For today, Janet Shamley and NBC News, Las Vegas. Fugen Nezaraglu is a co-author of Overcoming Compulsive Hoarding. Doctor, good morning to you. Nice to see good you. Good morning. Let's talk about degrees and, and things like that. I mean, okay, if you got somebody at home right now saying, okay, my closets are full, my desktops are full, versus when you really have a problem, where do you draw the line? Well, I think when it starts interfering with your functioning to some extent, when it's occupying so much space that you can't use your sofa, you can't use your kitchen table, your um, refrigerators are maybe in disrepair. Is it an inconvenience, though? Is it a nuisance when it gets to that level, or can it be actually damaging and dangerous to the person who's experiencing it? Oh, absolutely dangerous. It's a health hazard. Um, you can have black mold. A lot of people develop respiratory problems. I mean, obviously, it depends on the degree to which you have the problem but at, it usually accumulates over time so initially people don't notice that they have a problem so they say oh I'm just collecting some stuff yeah the, the young lady in the piece I thought tried to answer a question and couldn't come up with a good answer and that is why I mean d generally speaking do compulsive hoarders think that one day they're going to need these things that's why they keep them or is it just emotional attachment to these things both. We call it sentimental or instrumental. Uh, it could be sentimental attachments where they hold on to things because they feel if they let it go that they're going to lose their memories. Uh, I had an 80 year old woman whose husband had died 20 years ago. She had not thrown out anything of her husband's because she felt that if she threw that one shirt out she would forget about that cruise that they went on. And, and yet, wouldn't it be true that when you open some of these boxes in these people's homes, they can't even remember that they've got this stuff? Oh, absolutely. So how do they have an emotional attachment to something they don't even know they have? Right. Well, you ask them, and they would tell you that, you know, I, I will one day look at it, or I know what's in there. But the reality is you're absolutely right. They don't remember what's in there, or mail, for example, or newspapers. They, they want to hoard and accumulate information from the fear that they're not going to have that information when they need it. How do you treat someone like this other than going in there box by box and seeing how their anxiety level changes? Well, basically, they don't like to come into treatment. They don't understand that they have a problem. It's family members who generally come into treatment. Um, or seek out treatment. One thing I really want to emphasize is family members should not throw out their stuff. This is when suicide occurs. This is when people have really a nervous breakdown uh, in layman's terms. 
And that's a that's a problem that a lot of families face. They want to go in there. The person is away at work, or they're in, on vacation, or something happens. They go in there and they want to throw everything out. No, they sh the family members should seek professional help. They should read up on hoarding. They should get as right. much information as possible. All right, doctor. Good advice. We appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you.